Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how I go about editing my scripts. I'll also give you some general tips and go through some examples of things to look for when editing your script. Now, when I compare my script afterwards, when I'm done editing, to what I started with, I'm always glad that I put in the extra time, and I think you will be too. Okay, let's get to work. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a Word document that I've created for the purposes of showing you how I go about editing my script. And down here, once again, I have my visuals layout for my double fertilization video. So, I'll take you through sort of two things in this video. One, I'll briefly discuss just some tips for editing your script. And then I'll discuss several things that you can look for specifically when you're editing your script to make it easier for your students to learn this material. Okay, so let's get started. So first, a few tips for just editing your script. After you've written your script, let at least a day pass between writing and editing. This is just a general editing tip. If you're too close to something or it's too fresh in your memory, it's kind of hard to view it with a critical eye. So let at least a day pass between writing and editing if you can. Next, don't let the perfect get in the way of the good here, everyone. You can spend as much time as you want editing your script, but at some point you're going to reach a point of diminishing returns where small changes you're making are not going to have that big of an impact on how well your students actually learn the material. Next, and kind of related to that, stop editing when you feel that your changes that you're making are only going to result in very marginal learning gains from your students. Next, when you're writing and when you're editing, try to make sure that your script reflects how you naturally speak. And when you're reciting the script, this will make you seem just a little more comfortable and, and natural when you're recording your voice. So if you have idioms that you like to use or phrases that you're commonly saying to your students, feel free to put those in your script. Okay. And next, look at and edit the visual layout while editing your script. Uh, this is just a suggestion for me. This is what I do because often I find that when I'm reading through and editing my script, I have ideas about how I could show my visuals better on the screen when the students are actually watching the video. So I kind of edit those two things at the same time. Of course, you don't have to have your layout open on the screen like this. You'll probably have it open on your tablet, so you can just edit it while you're editing your script on your computer. Okay, so those are just some brief tips on script editing. Now we'll go through specific things that you can look for when editing your script to make it easier for students to understand the material that you're teaching. First of all, and most importantly, Look for inaccuracies. A couple examples here. There are seven cells within the fully developed ovule. Now, so someone who doesn't understand double fertilization and flower anatomy pretty well could be forgiven for thinking this statement is true. However, it's not. And the reason it's not is because the egg sac is the seven celled structure involved in double fertilization, and that egg sac is within a larger structure called the ovule. So the ovule is actually many, many cells. The egg sac is the one that has seven. So we should change this to, there are seven cells within the fully developed egg sac. Okay. Here's another one. The diploid sperm cells travel through the pollen tube. Sperm cells are not diploid, they are haploid. So no more drinking beer for me before I write scripts. Okay, next, the language should be understandable to students and as simple as possible. And of course, you should take into account how advanced your students are in this particular subject area when you're writing your script. And you'll probably just do this naturally as their teacher. One example here, pollination can be through anemophily, entomophily, or by other means. Hope I'm pronouncing those right. They're not words I use that often. And odds are your students won't understand them. 
These just mean anemophily means pollinated by wind and entomophily, the prefix entomo, like entomology, means pollinated by insects. So I can say this in a much simpler way that my students are more likely to understand. Pollination can be through wind or insects, or let's just rewrite the, the sentence down there. What I really want to show them is how the pollen grain right here can move to the stigma. So I'm probably going to want to write some production notes in there too to show them that visually. So instead of just saying this sentence while they're looking at this screen, I would write something instead like movement of the pollen grain point to that from the anther point to that to the stigma point to that can be accomplished through wind or insects. So much simpler, and I'm actually pointing on the screen to what I'm talking about. So if you find yourself writing for a while without any production notes, go back and try to make something happen on the screen while you're speaking. You don't want your students' attention to wander if there's nothing happening on the screen for a while. Okay, next, make sure that all relevant information is included. And I don't have examples here, but just as a general tip, when you're done writing your script, look back at your visuals to make sure that everything on your visuals page is actually mentioned in your script. And just as a rule of thumb here, most of what you write or say should have a visual component on the page. If it doesn't, consider whether that thing is actually worth saying in the video. And if it is, if it is that important, then it should probably have some kind of visual component within the video. Something that your students hear and see, they're more likely to remember than something that they just hear, or something that they just see. And conversely, most of what's on the page should be talked about. So at the end of your script, look at your page and see if you missed talking about any of the things on your page. Okay, next. Use consistent language. For example, I have a sentence here. It says, prior to double fertilization, the central cell is the only diploid cell within the egg sac. That's this big one here. After double fertilization and fusion of the nuclei, the binucleate cell becomes triploid. Now, this is a little confusing because the central cell is, in fact, pretty much the same as the binucleate cell but this sentence makes it seem like these are two different things. So I would just replace this with the central cell to use a consistent phrase when talking about the same thing. Okay, next. Remove any extraneous information that's unrelated to the learning objectives or outside the scope of your video or more generally your class. So here's an example. Once inside the egg sac, one of the sperm cell nuclei fuses with the nucleus of the central cell, creating a triploid central cell. The central cell also plays a critical role in pollen tube guidance. So this sentence probably isn't necessary. I've already mentioned how the pollen tube is guided to the ovule more generally by just saying, that it's guided there by cells within the female part of the flower. I don't really want to get into the mechanism of how that happens within this video. I don't want to get into the specific cells, like the central cell, that are making that happen. That's more suited to probably a plant physiology course rather than a general genetics course, which is what this video is for. So I'm going to just delete that sentence. Another example here, the sperm cells enter the ovule through the micropyle. Now that's true, the micropyle is just the essentially opening in the ovule where the sperm cells can enter. But this fact isn't necessary for my students to understand the genetic aspects of double fertilization and how the two resulting cells are formed. So instead I would just say the sperm cells enter the ovule. 
I don't really need to mention that they're doing it through the micropile. And third, pollen is formed in the anther, which together with the filament forms the stamen. I probably don't even need this sentence at all in this video because I've already talked about flower anatomy, but if I did want to include it, I would probably just cut this down to pollen is formed in the anther period. Just to remind them where the pollen is and where it starts on its journey down to the egg sac during double fertilization. So this does have something to do with my learning objective because it tells the students where the pollen is starting during the process of double fertilization. Okay. Next, write concisely, but not too concisely, because you do want to give your students a chance or enough time to understand what's going on on the screen and understand what you're saying. And one way to help this is use short sentences and lots of commas, because that will kind of build in natural pauses into your video and give the students more time to understand what's going on. For example, this is not concise enough. It says, once the two sperm cells infiltrate the egg sac, which is here, two sperm cells coming in, next is double fertilization, which involves two fertilization events. During the first fertilization event, one sperm cell makes its way to the egg cell, and the nucleus of the egg cell and the nucleus of the sperm cell fuse, creating the zygote, which is diploid. So very, very wordy. But something that's too concise would be fusion of sperm and egg, animate entry and fusion, form the diploid zygote, and label that. So the reason this is too concise is because it forces me to show two things at once on the screen, both fusion of the sperm cell and egg cell and entry of the sperm into the egg sac. Because I've condensed this language so much, I have to show the entry of the sperm cells into the egg sac and the fusion of the one of the sperm cells with the egg at the same time. And that's harder to follow for your students. It's much better to show things on the screen one at a time and talk about them one at a time. For example, and this is my just right or Goldilocks example, if you will. After the sperm cells enter the egg sac, and then I would show them entering the egg sac, the nucleus of one sperm cell fuses with that of the egg, and then I would show the fusion event of those two nuclei. So I'm showing one thing at a time and talking about one thing at a time. And then forming the zygote, label the zygote, which is down here, this label appears, which is diploid, and then label it with that 2N to show that it's diploid. So I'm showing one thing at a time on the screen and mentioning one thing at a time in the script. Okay, and last and really least important, we have grammar. And the reason this is a bit less important is because your students are not gonna read your script. They're going to listen to your voice recording of you reciting the script. And small grammatical mistakes really don't interfere with learning that much when they show up in your speech. But I do think that you should look for and correct any grammatical mistakes that you see just because when you're reciting the script, they'll be distracting. Now, all of this might seem like a lot to keep track of when you're editing your script but you probably already do this kind of naturally in the course of teaching your students because as a teacher you're already pretty good at explaining things and that's really the purpose of all i just talked about just to make sure that what you're saying makes it easier for students to understand the content of your video so really it's just a matter of instead of speaking in such a way that makes something easier to understand, which you already probably know how to do, you just have to write in such a way that makes something easier to understand. And that's really the biggest benefit of writing and editing a script before you hit the record button. You can take your time and really try to find the best 
and most understandable language that will make it easier for your students to understand the content. Okay, so I hope you found those tips and examples of script editing useful. It does take some time, but it is worth it. And this actually brings us to the end of pre-production, which really is the most time-consuming phase of video production. Next is production. But before you move on to the next video, make sure that you have a completed and edited script and that you have your visuals laid out in your screencasting program so that you're ready for the production phase. In the next video, I'll show you how to recite your script and record your voice and give you some tips to make sure that your voice sounds great for your video. See you then.